main point of this video is I want music students to not feel like they need to be full-time music to be a success. You really don't have to do that. Today, we're going to talk about something that many musicians and artists can relate to. We're talking about pursuing a career in music and balancing that with having a nine to five. I don't know where this came from. It's super prevalent in music schools with music students. And that is this idea that in order to be successful as a musician and be respected, you need to be a full-time musician and you can't have a nine to five or any other job around working as a musician. So the first thing I want to say is it's not shameful. It's not shameful to have a stable job. It's not shameful to have a nine to five whilst pursuing whilst chasing a career in music. So let's dive into how we can actually start to make this work. First up, the reality of being a musician. Let's be real, the music world, if, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. And it would be an aspirational career. It would be a career that your parents, your family would want you to get involved in. Now, if your world was anything like mine, my family and family friends were not jumping over the moon when I said I wanted to pursue music. Now, I actually had very supportive parents, immediate family, and they were very much of the opinion, you know, if it's something you want to do, life is short, you know, give it, give it a go, see how you get on. But deep down, I don't think they expected me to make it work. I don't think they really thought that actually it would pan out the way it has, that that could become a full-time income for me. And why is that? The work is hard. The work is hard and it's inconsistent. There is no one clear roadmap into getting the work. And we also run into this supply and demand issue where lots of people want to do the same thing and there's only so much of that work available. So for me, this looked like I started doing gigs as a feature musician or a background musician for various film, TV commercial projects or like really random stuff, really random stuff where I was just in the background on an instrument. But one, it paid well, it wasn't frequent, but most importantly, I grew my network. So every gig I took, every job I took, I was always looking to connect with other people in that world and see, you know, just find the new connections and see if we can make something work. And I ended up meeting someone who ran an agency for musicians and I ended up becoming a casting assistant but also working on their social media as well in the background whilst pursuing my nine to five. Whoa, pursuing my career in music. Obviously, the main reason we would even consider having a nine to five is providing that level of stability, which is something that a typical music career lacks a lot of. Our seasons go up and down, you get feast and famine. It doesn't have to be that way. It's not that way for everyone, but Having spoke to a fair few people, it tends to be that way, especially heavily weighted around summer, festivals, good weather, lots of gigs, more people willing to go outside, go to live events, and then the winter, Christmas time with lots more, especially corporate parties, winter events and Christmassy events, the holiday seasons, basically. That's kind of your big, your big wins, summer. And around that sort of Christmas, November, December time. And then yeah, everyone prepares for January. You know, January to March, typically very quiet. So let's look at some of the benefits then of a nine to five. First up, it's the consistency of income. Looking back now, one thing I would change in my journey or advise anyone moving forward with their journey now is to know how you're going to pay your rent. Just knowing that you've got your rent covered in the early days is gonna pull a massive weight off your shoulder and it will actually give you the flexibility, more flexibility, I would say, than just going balls to the wall, music, and, you know, really struggling because you end up in a position where you have to take whatever you can to pay the bills, but actually by saying yes to this one opportunity because you need the money, you've now blocked out a weekend that wants another opportunity that's a much better opportunity for your career comes in you physically can't take it, you financially can't take it because you can't afford to lose this little bit here. Whereas if you had a part-time or nine to five job, you know, you're working more in the daytime where the music work isn't as busy, you can then know that your, your rent, your bills are covered moving forward. Because sometimes, you know, let's be real, 
if we're really talking about career progression, sometimes the biggest win isn't money. You know, we're, we're getting into dicey waters talking about, you know, the quote unquote exposure. I, everyone has a payout. Everyone has a payout. Regardless of what you think about exposure or not, everyone has their buyout. I do think there's certain lines that shouldn't be crossed. And I do think there's certain standards as a whole, as a musician, as the music world and the freelance world that we should all keep each other accountable to not let companies take advantage of new people. I've seen this happen in the actor world. In the past, musicians have stuck together a lot more, have worked together to kind of put their feet down on establishing those ground rules with unions like DMU to ensure that for the big work, at least certain standards are met. And if you are a musician, especially, I'm talking about musicians because this is what I've done. Check out the MU. They are a game changer. They're, they've got templates. They've got contract templates. They've got ideas, rough ideas of what you should be getting paid. Because that's kind of the hardest thing when you're a student or just getting started is, you know, you don't even know what good pay is. When you, when you start, you know, earning 50 quid to play your instrument feels like a massive achievement. Even a hundred quid, that's a big win. But then moving forward, they don't touch the same levels that they used to. Another benefit is time management. Any other job you take, you know it's gonna fit in within a certain number of hours. So it's easy to plan around. You can plan around a nine to five. And I would actually say a third benefit of a nine to five is boredom. Doing the nine to five will actually light that fire to push harder when you do actually get home to work on your craft to get the gigs to actually maybe change the situation. And even if it's not getting out of a nine to five, it's maybe reducing your hours or being in a position to negotiate better hours, more flexible hours and an agreement that works for you. I used to work for my uni after I graduated. Really and truly it's a sales role. Now I got to a point where that work and the gigs were coming in at a point where it was like this and I had to, um, make a decision basically. I can either settle for the salary that I had there or go at it and take this music opportunity. And I ended up having to leave. I didn't go through all my studies to just work to get more people into the uni. That didn't make sense. I had the opportunity. In fact, <laughs> funny enough, at the time it was a tour with a CBC, CBBS presenter, which is a UK kids TV show. So I went on tour with Justin Fletcher aka Mr. Tumble, toured around the UK for a month or so. Crazy thing to even talk about quitting a nine to five for. It was a great experience. And for the record, he's a lovely person. No concerns there about your kids because it's one of the first questions I get asked. What I ended up doing when I came off that tour was I managed to negotiate with the university to come back working on a casual workers agreement. They didn't have to guarantee me any hours, but I was good at what I did. They knew that and it made sense for both of us to have that agreement where I could come in working part remotely and part just being on call for various different events and open days and stuff like that because I knew the system and I knew there'd still be lots of that work that they needed. So how do we balance work and music? It is a fine line. The goal, the target would be to pick work that provides you obviously with enough income but also gives you the flexibility. You want the flexibility. You want to be able to say yes when a great opportunity comes through. And that's not gonna be, it's not gonna work in every place, but if you find somewhere that is understanding like that, even if the work's not amazing, that's a great position to be in because having the nine to five actually then allows you to fund the music. If you're an artist, recording costs money. It's a lot easier as a session musician, as an instrumentalist, to be able to earn income through your music than being an artist is. The artist world is a slower burn, but the rewards can also be a lot greater further down the line if you get things to work for you. So you just have to start thinking more outside of the box and we are all now entertainment companies. We're all now entertainment companies. Your goal is, can you build an audience of people who love and respect what you do? And ultimately, will they then pay for a piece of that? This is why you get people who have built TikTok audiences who some of them have never really touched music before or they kind of like it and they get signed to big deals and blow up and you get a lot of 
people, especially music students, who have devoted however much of their lives to doing music, to writing, to performing, and they'll turn around and say, this person's only got that deal because they got the audience, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, yeah. And you can go into your conversation about art versus business. And if we're purely talking about art, then create music purely for art. And that's fine. But most of us want to get paid. Okay. Most of you, most of the people I talk to anyway, want to receive some kind of financial benefit from the work that they're putting out, from, from the art that they're creating. And if you're just there to create art, create art, and that's an amazing thing. But if we're going to talk about a business, we need to treat it like one. So you will at some point, if that's the route you're going down, have to look into how it is that you're going to build your audience. And these days, I'd probably argue it makes more sense to focus on building your audience over pumping out albums, over pumping out projects if you will you can't treat it 100% like art and be disappointed that it's not paying you like a business if you want to get paid for it you need to manage to break out of this idea that you only create for art that can be the root of what you do and it's definitely the inspiration but at some point you have to sit down and go okay how am I going to turn this into something that becomes a business for me and I think now that route is building an audience. So I would argue for a lot of musicians, certainly a lot of artists, you'd be better off working your nine to five or part-time job and putting everything else into building an audience. So whether that's content, whether that's covers, whether that's live music nights, like I'm a big fan of in-person stuff. Don't get me wrong. I'm a massive fan of in-person stuff, but from the angle of building your network and audience. Yeah, don't feel bad. Don't feel bad or shamed in any way. Don't let anyone make you feel bad or shamed about having a job, having a nine to five whilst doing music. Most people do. A lot of pros do. They're, they're working another job or maybe it's not quote unquote another job, but they're doing some kind of daytime work. Even if it's teaching you, you do get a few that are at that point with sessions where they are just sessioning and that's it but you know I, I know a lot of people who are pro musicians that are working in IT you know they work in IT daytime or flexible hours and then they do the music around that use it as a tool use your job as a tool to feed and grow everything else you're doing with the music and creative career Thank you again for watching this episode of The Creative Grind. Remember, it's not shameful to have a 9 to 5 whilst pursuing a music career. Embrace the grind, keep chasing the dream. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for more content about my journey as a UK bassist and your journey as a creative. See you in the next video.